Hey guys, here we are in DCS world, as always. And today we're going to take a quick and dirty look at the brand new ALQ-184 electronic countermeasures pod that was added to the F-16C with the recent open beta update. We're going to fly through a quick sortie to show you guys the switchology associated with the ECM pod and how to use it, as well as take a look at some trade-offs that you may want to think about when deciding whether or not to bring your ECM pod on your next F-16 sortie here in DCS World. So to start off with talking about some of these trade-offs, we've got a clean and slick F-16 here in the payload panel of the DCS World Mission Editor. Over on the right hand side of the payload panel, we've got our fuel slider set to zero with our fuel weight correspondingly set to zero pounds. Now, most pilots in DCS World tend to put a 300 gallon centerline drop tank on their F-16. And we can see that gives us a total of around 2000 pounds of extra fuel for our very thirsty GE F-110 engine in our Block 50 Viper. Now, when I plan DCS World F-16 sorties for pilots to fly in my missions, I tend to go ahead and plan for the fact that they're going to have their centerline fuel tank dry through the taxi, takeoff, and climb to cruise evolution of their flight. Because DCS World isn't perfect and there are so many varying skill levels of DCS World pilots, people tend to go through that centerline drop tank very, very fast. So it's a good thing that we have it on our jet for some of those long range missions. Also, when people reach that cruise destination, most of those DCS pilots tend to jettison that drop tank, alleviating that extra weight and drag and allowing their F-16 to fly that much faster and be just a little bit more maneuverable as a result. Keep in mind that when you mount an ECM pod to the center line of your F-16, it is non-jettisonable. That drag and extra weight penalty is with you throughout the entire flight. You physically cannot jettison an ECM pod from an F-16. It's too expensive and the Air Force just won't allow it. Keep in mind that in operational F-16 squadrons with say the USAF or the IAF, Israeli Air Force, any F-16 that is really tasked with air to ground work is going to be carrying an ECM pod, especially in contested airspace. However, the kind of idea of these different situations where we have to decide whether to carry a drop tank or an ECM pod that we face in DCS world isn't really a problem for real life air forces. Because of the training, professionalism, and skills of real F-16 pilots, making up for the lack of centerline drop tank is very simple with the use of air-to-air -air refueling assets that are plentiful in Western Air Forces and in the Israeli Air Force. So why not take that extra protection if you're going to be flying into contested airspace in real life? In DCS world, if your mission set is definitely going to be seed and you're definitely pretty darn good at air-to-air -air refueling, definitely take that ECM pod. If you're just flying strike or you're flying counter air in your F-16, you may want to think about maybe just leaving that ECM pod at home, especially if you're not super comfortable with air-to-air -air refueling. So with that in mind, why don't we go ahead and hop in the cockpit and go over how the ECM pod works in the cockpit and its various switchology and the actual influence it has on protecting you from those SAM systems. Alrighty, so we'll make sure that we've got an appropriate seed loadout. We'll bring our internal fuel back to 100% and we'll go ahead and fly our quick little sortie here. Keep in mind that when you air start your F-16 and you're trying to just practice using the ECM pod, there's some settings that you're going to have to manipulate in order to get it to work correctly for the situation that you find yourself in. We'll go over that right now. So we'll go ahead and click fly and we'll throw on our altitude hold for our jet. We'll kind of get the cockpit set up the way that I like to have my cockpit set up. We'll turn on our HMD, get the correct program set for our countermeasures dispenser system. We'll go to air to ground mode. We'll turn power on to our AGM 88s. We'll put turn the HSD on. We'll go over to our weapon page. We will set our harm to EOM mode and we'll bring up our HAD page for our HTS system. 
All right. So we've got our jet set up and ready to go for a little bit of sea to action here over the Syria map. When you air start in your F-16 with your ECM pod, you're going to have to make sure that you bring the mode of your CMDS panel to semi-automatic position. You can also have it in the automatic position, but I recommend against that because that's going to waste a lot of your chaff and flares. Next, we need to bring power to all five modules of our ECM pod. We do that by simply pressing down on these push tiles to make sure we have a yellow S on all of the push tiles. Keep in mind that FRM and SPL are not yet integrated into the ECM pod of the DCS F16. FRM mode is for working with the ECM pods of your wingmen in tight formation to bring together the strength of all of your ECM pods for extra jammer protection, while special mode is a special jamming algorithm that can be run through the targeting pod to actually influence a very specific set of electronic uh, emissions that you may encounter. Also keep in mind that when you air start, the transmit switch is usually in the number three position. That is for the noise jammer, and that can be kind of a bad position to have the jammer in because it basically tells everybody in the airspace, especially on a PVP type server or situation, where exactly you are. That says, hey, come look at me, I'm jamming. However, 99% of the time, you're definitely gonna to wanna to have this in the number one position for the self-protection self-protection jammer position. With that in mind, let's go ahead and arm our ECM pod and make sure it's ready to go for when our SA-2 is actually going to try to engage us once we turn into its threat circle directly off of our left hand side at our 9 o'clock. And we can see that our Waypoint is situated right on top of our SAM site just to give a little bit of a better illustration for you guys watching on YouTube. We'll go ahead and go Canter Measures Management Switch aft to set all of the modules of our ECM pod to the automatic position. At this point, they are armed and ready to go to start jamming the SA2 once it locks onto us. The reason we're using an older SA2 for this demonstration is because the effects of the ECM pod will be strongest against older model SAMs. We're also going to use the SA2 because it has a notable home on jam function that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now let's go ahead and queue up the SA2 for our HAD. Oh, that is the search radar. And let's see if we can get the SA-2. There we go. That way we can be ready to fire a harm at him when we're done playing with him. Counter. Now we just heard Betty in our F-16 say counter as soon as that SA-2 locked us up. We can now see on our ECM panel down here that the A's have now turned to T's, blue T's that now say stand for transmit. The jammer pod is now actively jamming the SA2 and trying to break the lock by denying it ranging and altitude information. So let's see if we can get it to break the lock. The way ECM is modeled in DCS world right now kind of makes me think that it's kind of almost a random number generator in the way that sometimes it will break the lock, sometimes it won't. There seems to be a slight element of luck to it at the moment, but I will also say that the skill level of the SAM site in question definitely is affects whether or not your jammer can actually influence the situation. So having a lower skill level on the SAM site you're trying to engage is going to allow your ECM pod to actually be more effective against it than if you had it, say, set to Veteran. I believe this is so, it is sort of simulating a more experienced SAM operator may be able to get around and burn through your jamming efforts a little bit sooner. So it looks like we weren't able to break the lock. 
and we'll go ahead and release some chaff, and we'll start to maneuver against that Sam. Every time Betty says counter, she's trying to have you manually command your countermeasures dispenser to dispense countermeasures. Yeah, it looks like we should have turned off our external lights, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and see what these SA-2s are doing coming after us. So it looks like we only had one SAM launch come at us. And this SA-2 is definitely not going very fast anymore. So I think we have this defeated. Now at this point, we've been evading this SA-2 for quite a long time with our jammer completely active. This is where kind of the art of electronic warfare is starting to come in. The SA-2 is probably homing in on our jamming signal at this point. Later model SA-2s are, like the one modeled in DCS World, have a very notable home on jam function for their radar and the seeker head of the missile itself. So at some point, if the jammer has not broken the lock, you're going to want to have the jammer actually turn off. And we can manually do that by going CMDS right. So that's going to be the countermeasures management switch to the right hand side to manually turn off the jamming of our ECM pod. So we went CM, CMS switch right and we can see that the lock is now broken. So at this point, we can kind of see the cat and mouse game of electronic warfare starting to come together, which is very cool because electronic warfare is something that Matt Wagner said is gonna to start to play into DCS world more and more in 2022, which is definitely something that I'm very excited about. So even if your ECM pod doesn't full on a break a lock, what it's gonna allow you to do and why it's a good idea to carry one when you are flying as a wild weasel is if you manipulate the, plot, the pod in a skillful way, you're gonna be able to perform that wild weasel roll with less chance of a SAM hitting you. But for longer range SAM systems, like say against an SA-10, it's gonna deny the SAM system a lock on you to allow you to close the distance further with the SAM site and allow you to get off a harm shot on the SAM system for a much shorter distance, which is going to allow you to have a better kill probability against that SAM system itself. So I think we're done playing here, so why don't we go ahead and get, fire a harm off on this SA-2. and Magnum. But you can see here, we are closing to a very short distance with that SA-2, and our ECM pod is doing a really good job denying him a good enough lock to actually fire upon us. So there's the launch. Let's go ahead and turn the ECM off, and let's pump out a whole bunch of chaff. As we attempt to evade the SA-2 launch. And to kind of play with him again, let's go ahead and turn our pod back on to transmit. And let's go ahead and check the F-10 map and see what's going on out here. So we can see, definitely got a couple SA-2s coming after us here. And because we were able to get closer to the SAM site before the launch, we can see these SA-2s that are near to us are at a much higher speed. This is simply because of the fact that we were closer to the SAM site when it launched on us. But we can also see the ECM pod allowed us to get closer to get a definitely good shot with our harm on the fansong radar that was locking us up. We can see that pretty much for certain that harm is going to hit the fansong prior to the SA-2 actually getting to us. Of course, we're not going to stop our evasive maneuvers against those SA-2s coming at us. And so we're probably going to defeat them kinematically as well as our harm is going to take out the fan song.
and we can see boom and with the destruction of the fan song which is no longer there these SA2s should self-destruct so that's a quick demonstration on the ECM pod, and maybe some quick uh, demonstration of some potential tactics you may want to use with the ECM pod, but uh, it's definitely a fantastic addition to the F-16 in DCS, but it does come with some pros and cons and some different trade-offs. Like everything else in aviation, the military, or in life, everything has pros and cons and has trade-offs, whether you should bring the ECM pod or not, whether you should bring a specific weapon on a specific mission type or not, anything else like that. So if you liked the video, please give us a like and a subscribe, and stay healthy out there and have a fantastic holiday season, guys.